Welcome to the Engineerable channel. I just received these riser hop-ups for gel blasters. I wanted to give you a quick look at it because it comes with some accessories that are really interesting and I haven't seen with uh, these hop-ups before. So I bought this hop-up from AliExpress because it's one of the only places that will ship to the U.S. All the other Australian dealers that sell the riser hop-ups will not ship to the U.S. So it looks a little bit different than what I saw on the website. Like it doesn't have the plastic pieces coming out of the sides and the slot on the side there. I think this might be basically their newest version. If you look at the top, it does have riser molded in the plastic. I don't know that a fake would go through all that trouble to add the logos to the plastic there. So I suspect it's real. It just looks different than what I've seen before. And also it has a very small air vent versus I've seen some that have bigger air vents. But I, if you look online at the riser, you'll see some of the small air vents, big air vents. But most of them have this um, cut in the side like, like this one right here. It's got the cut where the plastic comes out. Now this was a Ubane hop-up and this is the first hop-up that I bought and check out my video about that if you want to see it. This was purchased from the Genduo website and they claimed that it was a Riser V2, just a Uban branded Riser V2. But what I noticed is the biggest difference that you see between all the Riser V2 hop-ups is that the risers have a plastic top piece and bottom piece here, which that allows the set screws to screw into the plastic and thread into there and be retained by the plastic. Versus here, you have to put some Loctite, otherwise the set screws could vibrate out. So I suspect that this is just a copy of the Riser V2 and not actually manufactured by Riser. Or maybe it is manufactured by Riser and it's just uh, made differently and sold under a different brand. The U-Ban hop-up, it only came with a curved and ribbed top and a flat bottom tongue. That's all it came with, nothing else. I purchased three of these riser hop-ups and I wasn't expecting this because it wasn't shown in the pictures or in the description, but they came with four tongues. So there's two tongues pre-installed and what's really interesting if you can see it is that the bottom tongue has rails. And according to what I've seen online, that is the most advanced and newest type of design. So what it does is it really guides the gel ball at the bottom in a straight path rather than the flat tongue that kind of allows a gel ball to squish out and maybe come out kind of weird and not consistent. So the top is still ribbed in the pieces that are in there, but in addition, it came with two more tongues and of course the Allen wrench and some set screws. One of these tongues is flat, like the standard riser, and then one of these tongues is curved, but smooth. So I'm not sure if the curved but smooth one is also meant to be an optional bottom piece or if it's meant to be a top piece that has reduced friction because it doesn't have the ribs. Although I don't know that a top piece with no ribs would actually work. So I suspect it's meant to be just an alternate bottom piece. If we push out the tongues that are in there right now, we can take a look, closer look at them. These are the tongues that came pre-installed in there. So the top piece is curved and ribbed for the gel ball's pleasure and the bottom piece has rails on it. I actually wanted to make something with rails but I wasn't sure besides having to mold something how I could make something that was that smooth. I was thinking about maybe using some pieces of stainless, stainless rods embedded in something else to keep them in position. So it's really cool that this came with that because I was totally not expecting it because I really wanted to try the rail concept. So you can take any of these four tongues and mix and match them. Like I could use the curved smooth one and the curved ribbed one. Put those in there. That works. I could use a smooth one on top with the rails on the bottom. I'm curious about using the smooth one on top and the rails on the bottom with a blaster that doesn't need as much hop up. Like maybe some of these lower power blasters, they don't need quite so much hop up. They just need a little bit of friction on the top. So then maybe that would provide enough versus when you have a higher power blaster, you really need those ribs.
to give it a backspin. So these riser hop-ups really give you a lot of options, and they also fit perfectly onto the 9.5mm barrel. For the sputterball and other inexpensive blasters that use a 9mm barrel, you're going to have to use the Coke can spacer method to put this hop-up on there. I've seen people say you can wrap electrical tape to put that on there, but I don't like the idea of electrical tape because I feel like electrical tape is squishy and it's not going to give a good solid connection to the barrel. The aluminum, it's really not compressible and it gives a really solid connection to the barrel. So once you install these on the barrel, you're going to put the set screw in the top and the bottom to hold it on the barrel. And then you're going to put one set screw in the front. You don't need to use both of these holes. I'm not sure why both of these holes are there. The advice I've seen in videos from gel blaster companies is just to use one of these holes, usually the forwardmost hole. And then there's one on the underside to adjust the underside. There are many hop-ups like the Aztec Innovations that only come with one tongue, the tongue on the top that's ribbed. I prefer the ones with the dual tongues. It just seems to make more sense that if you can really control the spacing and the amount of pressure applied to the gel balls, you're going to get more consistent results than if you're just relying on the gel ball shooting out the same position each time to rub on the top. I'm going to be making some other videos and installing these on the gel blasters that we have, like the Splatter Ball, Unlocks, Surge XL, and any other rifle style blaster that has an aluminum barrel. So stay tuned if you want to see those videos. I'm also planning to 3D print a cover for the hop up that has a adjustment wheel on it so you can make adjustments in the field without having to use this fiddly little Allen wrench which is just not going to happen when you're out playing.